Hey guys, this is Chloe from the future. I am just editing the video and I'm passing by just to tell you that I'm going to present during ResolveCon 2024 a subject about composite mood. I encourage you to come and listen to the presentation. It's going to be the 22nd of August at 2 p.m. Pacific time and uh, it's going to be live stream on KC Faris YouTube channel. There we're going to discuss the role of composite mode and also how it can really change the game in your color grading. I can't wait to see you in the chat for this. And also if you are interested to follow the World Resolve Con, it's gonna be between the 21st of August and the 23rd of August, when there's gonna be multiple speakers that's gonna present different topics. You can find there Casey Faris, Darren Mostyn, Mr. Alex Tech, Daria Fisun, and Cullen Kelly, and so many more. So I'm super excited about this. And when I'm not going to present, I will be in the chat trying to interact with everybody of you guys. And it's going to be really fun. Okay, I'm done. Let's go back to the video. Hi guys, this is Fenchy and today we're gonna make our footage look filmic and our grade look cinematic. This video is a re-edition of my really first video that I have posted on this YouTube channel. And why I am doing this re-edition is just because, look at me guys, I'm better now. No, honestly, I tried to play this video and I cringe so much that... I think it is good that I just redo a video about this. So to create our filmic look, you would only need DaVinci Resolve in the free version. And let's jump right in, guys. So here we are, guys, in our timeline. And I'm going to cut this tutorial in two parts. So first of all, I'm going to show you how to make your image cinematic in a Rec. 709 color space. And uh, after, I'm going to show you how to make your image look cinematic in a DaVinci Y gamut color space. We're going to start with the Rec. 709 color space. And for this, I'm going to ask you to go to your project settings over here and just set your timeline color space to Rec. 709 scene and output color space to the output color space you need to do. So if it's for TV, it's going to be gamma 2.4. If it's for internet, it's better to switch to gamma 2.2 because the color is going to be um, more consistent in gamma 2.2 if you are posting this video on Instagram or YouTube or etc etc. So before we start, we have to color manage our footage. And first, we need to go to our effects and type color space transform. So uh, you're going to take your color space transform and just drop it here. And uh, we're going to map our footage. So my footage over here is a Sony S-Log3 footage. So I'm just going to put in input color space Sony S Gamma 3 Cine and input gamma Sony S-Log3. Output color space, I'm going to put Rec. 709. And output gamma, I'm going to put gamma 2.4. So now you are having an interpretation of what the camera saw on set in Rec. 709. So for me, when I want to do a filmic look, I want to superimpose a film print emulation over my footage. So that means that I'm going to have my footage that will take the characteristics of a Fujifilm or a Kodak. For this, DaVinci Resolve has three LUTs that you can use. So you can go to LUTs and you can go to Film Looks. And here are all the looks that you can use uh, as film print emulation provided by DaVinci Resolve. The thing is, these film LUTs are meant to be fed by a footage that is coming from a film camera. So if you see, if uh, I try to put this film here, I'm going to have a result that would be all cranked and that's not going to be pleasing at all. So then we will need to emulate a sort of a film log that comes from a film camera for these lots to work. How are we going to do this? It is very simple. So here we are in our color space transform and we're going to change few things. So um, for output gamma, you're going to change the output gamma from gamma 2.4 to Cineon Film Log. So Cineon Film Log is actually the log that is used by these film cameras. For the output color space, we will stay in Rec. 709 because this is a color space that is stable enough to interpret our film lot. Here in color space transform, you're going to change your tone mapping method 
to luminance mapping and saturation compression. You're gonna see why uh, we are just putting this first as a preparation and I'm going to show you why uh, just in a bit. So now that we uh, prepared everything, we can put our film lot in this node just after our color space. Uh, here I will have the choice between all the lots that are uh, marked with Rec 709. If you are trying to put the DCI-P3, it's not gonna work because it is intended to receive a DCI-P3 color space. Here, we are only focusing on the Rec 709 lots and you have at least six lots to choose from. So you are having uh, Fujifilm and Kodak LUTs. Uh, you are having also indicators that will uh, give you the Kelvin of each LUT and uh, it will just like indicate then the temperature of each LUT. What I want to do is that I want to drop this Fujifilm uh, D65 over here. And if you see, compared to what happened when we try to put a random film lot after our Rec 709 Gamma 2.4, here we are interpreting pretty well the film lot and we can grade around this. Things to know, because the film looks are technical lot, you can't use the key output gain, okay? Because you will mess up then the gamma output. So I was telling you that we would need to set up our tone mapping to luminance mapping and saturation compression. The reason is because, for example, if I enable use custom max input, I can regulate uh, the amount of brightness that I have in my CST. So then it's easier for me to tailor uh, my brightness because it is possible that when I apply a FPE my highlights will go crank and so then uh, it will help me to retrieve my highlights. Saturation compression is the same. Uh, sometimes you can have colors that will be so dense that actually your footage can't handle it and will break. So uh, this saturation knee and saturation max will help you to actually desaturate a bit the footage for you to retrieve um, the essence of your footage. Now we can grade and we're gonna grade before our CST and so then like I can just have a bit more fun and open up a bit my image and let's say I want to have a bit more density because you know when you are working for a film look what is good is that you can also create density to create some separation in the image so uh, this is what I would do and I would just tie everything up with a vignette just like to bring him up and also I'm just gonna add outside and have a vignette to uh, pop him out. Here, if you see, uh, we are having our look that look very filmic and cinematic and this is actually how you are implementing a film lot in a Rec 709 timeline. So now let's do the Da Vinci White Gamut color space. So if you are interested to use these film lots in a Da Vinci White Gamut color space, this is what we are going to do right now. So for this, you're gonna go to your project setting and uh, instead of timeline color space in Rec 709, you're going to change it to DaVinci Y Gamut Intermediate. So now that we have this, we are doing actually the, almost the same as what we've done uh, with the Rec 709 example. Uh, here, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to create my color space. So for DaVinci Y Gamut, we need to create a sort of a sandwich to a grade in between because uh, we are going from a camera log to DaVinci Y Gamut to on after output in Rec 709 because we need to output in Rec 709 as our screens are made to read the colors in Rec 709. So for this, we need two color space transform. One that's gonna be an in and one, I'm just gonna copy and paste, that's gonna be an out, okay? So 
Till the in, we are going to do, you know, like what we've done with the Rex 709. So we are going from the Sony S Gamut 3, S Log 3. And instead of going to a Rex 709 color space, we are going to go to a Da Vinci wide gamut, Da Vinci intermediate. I'm just going to put none because I am entering a color space to work within it and out we are going to put da vinci y gamut as what we've done da vinci intermediate as input color space input gamma and output color space we're going to put rec 709 oop rec 709 and output gamma if you guess what we're going to put if we want to have a film lot that's going to be a Cineon. Okay, so output gamma, we're going to go to Cineon film log and we're going to do the same as uh, what we've done for the Rex 709 example. We're going to uh, put our tone mapping to luminance mapping and to saturation compression. So after this, then I can create my node. That's going to be my film node. And I can just add the film I want, you know. So uh, let's say I want this. Well, let's say we, we're going to put the Kodak just for change because we use the Fujifilm first. So uh, I'm having the Kodak. And now to grade, I will grade in between my two nodes of in and out because I want to have the characteristics of the Da Vinci Y gamut to grade and not the characteristics of Rec. 709. So it makes more sense for me to grade in between. Okay, so then uh, I'm just gonna grade. I can have my balance over here. So I open up my image. As we've done, as I've done, like we can just raise the density if you see. Okay, and because he's a bit red and uh, I'm a bit bothered by this, I'm gonna go to uh, something for the skin a bit more yellowish so i'm i'm doing it very quickly because the subject of the video is not the grade that i'm doing but how you are doing a film look inside davinci resolve for free right but <laughs> i can't let him with a magenta skin i'm a, i am sorry guys i am really sorry and uh, after i'm just gonna put a vignette and yeah just just bringing up and after I add outside and bring it down. And this is how you are making film looks. So film looks, for you to remember one thing from the video, is looks that come from a film emulation or film print emulation. So of course, this, what I've done, what I've demonstrated to you is one way because uh, DaVinci Resolve has a bunch of film LUTs that are film print emulation that you can use for free. But also you can have some uh, film emulation out of the Hanser, which then like uh, cost a bit more money because it's an external plugin and uh, out of uh, the film look creator but then like you will need to have the Resolve Studio version to uh, use the uh, film look creator. So this is a way, I think with this way, it's literally, I think 70% of what you would like to tackle when you are reproducing a film look. So that's why it's very valuable and important for you to know how to implement your film lot in your note tree. I hope this video helped. If you want more content on color grading, subscribe to the channel and I see you next time guys. See you.